All right, so I told you that I got this book a little while ago, The Great Starvation Experiment by Ansel Keys and The Men Who Starved for Science by Todd Tucker. Uh, show a little picture of it here, probably focusing on it great. Um, this book, I gotta say, like, it's not my favorite book. Um, I, I think if you're looking for strictly the information on what actually happened, this book is not for you. If you're looking for like kind of a background of why they did it, Ansel Keys' background, kind of like an autobiography mixed with kind of like a story on what actually happened, kind of mixed with history. You know, it, it's into that. Like if you're really into history, this might be for you. Uh, but like the first 82 pages, I didn't highlight anything. I, I didn't start highlighting till page 83. Uh, I was gonna take notes and just kind of make a video off the notes, but it's kind of a lot. So what I'm going to do is there's gonna be a little bit of jump cuts in this video. I'm going to kind of just go over what I found and why I highlighted it. I have actually not finished this book. Um, I'm on like the refeed, the rest, it's called Restricted Rehabilitation. I don't know if I'm actually gonna read it uh, just cause honestly this book is a little struggle to get through. So I will link it down below just in case you want to check it out. Uh, if you're like a real history buff, but honestly, if you're just looking for the straight up information, you can get the, the like the manifest of what he actually did. He did publish it. It's like $150 though. So I'm like, eh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so the first thing that I highlighted at onset, the average uh, man averaged, the men averaged 152.7 pounds. Uh, from what I've found, I'm sure he had it, but I haven't found the average height he did mention 5'10 quite often, so that might have been the average height, but I didn't see it highlighted in here. And I did highlight this as the individual diets were adjusted based on meal to, uh, by meal basis, usually by tailoring the amount of potatoes that people would be eating uh, to keep each man on the curve. And here's the curve, and I kind of think it's kind of biased in a, in a way that he, he has this curve that he, like, he was dead set on people meeting this curve. Uh, throughout this book. <clears throat> so he would want to determine each man's ca uh, caloric break even point. Break even point is uh, in, you know, parentheses. The three meals a day added up to 3,200 calories while the men were told that the diet was supposed to approximate normal uh, American consumption. Most admitted that they never in their lives had eaten so well. Even during the control period, the cardinal rule of the study was uh, the volunteers would eat food provided by the lab. Now, this average of 3,200 calories did not have anybody gaining weight or losing weight. It was just their basal, you know, metabolic, whatever. This just kept them at uh, homeostasis. Uh, this was, and I also wanted to highlight this and kind of get uh, this out there. That they all had volunteer jobs, which occupied about 15 hours a week. Each su subject was required to walk 22 miles. I don't know why 22 miles. <laughs> Ran a week, not a day, a week. Like the last video, I said a day, it was a week. Uh, during the well-fed control period, the men took pleasure in their long walks as they learned the campus and surrounding city. That is not uh, the case as people were put into the uh, starvation period of this, which was the longest period of the whole thing. Uh, in addition to the endless testing, walking and working, keys scheduled 25 hours a week of instruction classes in language sociology and political science actually you know i'm rereading uh, one of my uh highlights here well one of the pages here and it does say that uh, on average even at the 3210 calories which i guess was adjusted on average the average person was losing uh, lost 1.76 pounds even in the, you know, quote, well-fed period of this, they actually lost weight on 3,210 calories. So that's interesting. Uh, and then the next page afterwards is the group uh, shifted overnight from three relatively generous meals of control period to only two Spartan meals per day, a breakfast at 8.30 a.m. and a supper at 5 uh, p.m. The two meals supplied an average of 1,570 calories per day, roughly half the amount of the three months. That's crazy. That they Even at 3,210 calories, they averaged losing almost two pounds. Not, and then from that they're putting on put on 1570 calories and if you really think about this this is what the average you know that dieter is told to eat now and these it, it, the, some of the symptoms of this is nuts uh what they what they went through 
with a heavy emphasis on potatoes, cabbage, and whole wheat bread. Meat was provided in quantity so small that the, most of the men would swear in later years that none was actually included. Here is a, a um, breakdown basically of one of the meals. So 80, uh, this is I'm assuming on the starvation because that's what they're talking about right now. 185 grams of bean and uh, pea soup, 255 grams of macaroni and cheese, 40 grams of rutabaga. And if you ever had rutabaga, I hate, I hate it, I hate it. I actually rather eat sweet potatoes. If you like it, congratulations. 100 grams of steamed potatoes. Most people probably haven't even had it. 100 grams of lettuce, uh, rutabaga is what I'm talking about there. All right, so that is like an average meal. Uh, they did start talking about some of what the people were going through after they were dropped down to 1,570 calories. Now keep in mind, this is what most people are told to eat these days. Uh, the time between meals had now become burdened. Some of the men were fighting, and, and this is in a very short period of time. Spirits remained high in the beginning, but they uh, they went down pretty quick. So hunger began hunger in the beginning, like in the feed phase. Hunger uh, began calling out uh, the weak among them. Uh, Franklin Watkins was, uh, you know, out first, and basically he started having dreams about cannibalism. And from what I can understand. And what he's writing here, he actually locked somebody in a room and tried to eat them. Uh, so he was kicked out after that. Um, but before that, he was, he, I guess he was a wealthy individual and he had a lot of money. So he was paying other people for their food in the beginning. So while Watkin, Watkins' uh, dreams of cannibalism were disturbing, they were not altogether surprising uh, to Keys. Cannibalism had always been linked to famine, especially in Asia. Uh, and actually, even if you read in the Bible, they would they would cannibalize their kids. <clears throat> this is not uncommon. Uh, despite surround, uh, surrendering uh, his money, Watkins' uh, uh, descent continued as he shoplifted. I guess they took his money from him because they knew he was cheating, he was paying people off. Uh, he would no longer buy at meals and in the barracks. He began openly challenging the value of the experiment. What are we really accomplishing here? What kind of science is this? And, and Keyes is like, well, you know, we know you're cheating, and he, he called him a failure, and he, he basically kicked him out of the group, all right? <clears throat> uh, he says he picked up the telephone and had Franklin Watkins taken to the psychiatric ward of the university hospital. Within a few days of normal meals, Watkins showed no signs of any of this cannibalism, his psychosis was completely fine, he completely went away. He was put back on his 3,200 calories a day and he was released. So take that for what it will. I mean, this 1,570 calories is causing these people to go into this. And people think uh, the people were more busy back in the day, but you got people working two or three jobs now just to afford an apartment that's like got roaches in it. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Like, how do you think that people, it's, it's nuts to me. Like, of course you've got like your people making money on the internet and everything like that. But I mean, by and large, most people are way more busy than they were back in the day. I mean, my my family used to tell me like when, when I was coming up, like, their schedules were, you know, they were uh, the American schedule, the American white picket fence schedule. Dude worked eight hours a day, woman took care of the house, and you know, it, it's just, it's, I mean, I don't know how you think that's more busy than working like three jet jobs. Um, then they started talking about some of the other guys, uh, this Jay Garner, Henry Schulberg's uh, classmates, um, I guess they were lived in India for a little while. Ventured from the lab the same uh, the same week to visit Dayton's uh, department store in downtown Minneapolis. He looked forward to completing a major part of his 22 mile walk every week, going to the department store. His journey came to a halt though when he uh, after the, was on the starvation for a little while, and he got trapped in the store's revolving door. He no longer had the strength to push it around. This is on 1,570 calories. This is not starving. This is, this is what people tell you to eat now. Uh, and he had to wait there until another customer came in and actually pushed the thing around because he got stuck in this revolving door on 1,570 calories a day. All right. Um, another thing, strength showed the greatest deterioration. There was this experiment that they did on every single person. I think you had to go through it twice. They would put you on a, I think there was strength test. They didn't really talk about that much in here, but they did talk about an endurance test where they would put people on a treadmill and they, they had to walk, I think it was three and a half miles just at a normal pace. And they, uh, no, 20, I forget what it was. It was like 20 minutes at three and a half miles an hour. And then they would crank it up to seven miles an hour. 
and you literally had, there was two guys on either, either side of you. you literally, they literally had to run until their legs failed and then they would catch him. Some of the guys that didn't catch, they caught their face on the treadmill on the way down. Um, but that was the experiment. And as the time went on, you know, it was crazy how deteriorated they were becoming. So it's a, strength showed the greatest deterioration during the first 12 weeks of the starvation. The men showed on average a 21% reduction in strength. Now they did have a, a strength measure. They really didn't talk about it in this book all that much. If they did, it was one of the pages I gla gl glanced over. All right, so here, here's kind of talking about that. So they, they they sat, I forget which one this is, uh, but they, they sat him on a bench and took uh, his pulse rates and calculated his score while Keyes watched. Uh, 32 down from a 72. So this guy in 12, what was it, 12 weeks, I think, at this point, he was rated at a 72, and now he was a 32 from high on the average category to solidly in the poor overall, a 55% decrease in fitness. The picture is uh, one of pure muscular weakness. And I think he might actually be the one, this is Keyes right here. He might actually be the one right there that they're talking about. And Keyes kind of had like this, um, he didn't want to lose anybody, but he kind of had like a bet going of who would drop next. So men uh, in the starvation uh, phase for nine weeks, and there is a lot of four and whatever shadowing in here, so it is kind of hard to follow. Like, first he'll be talking about nine weeks in, and then I'll be talking about 12 weeks in, and I'm like, which is which? So I don't know. Starvation week for uh, nine, there there has to be cheating. He, he blamed a couple of guys for cheating, so he implemented uh, temptation to cheat has become too powerful inside of this. There will be no more leaving the laboratory unaccompanied. We will implement a buddy system. If you need to go outside these walls from now on, you must take somebody from the lab with you. So somebody who was in charge of this experiment, he had a bunch of doctors and nurses and whatever involved with this. They had to be accompanying you, before, but you know, you weren't allowed to leave without them with you to see if you were because he just didn't think people were fitting on this curve of his. All right, so I did highlight quite a bit about the, these two, both Willoughby and Plower. These were the two most athletic, built and athletic people in all of the tests. They were the highest scoring in, in the test. And interesting, they didn't lose much weight. So both Willoughby and Plower had uh, trouble losing weight almost from the beginning. Plower's weight had stalled at 156 pounds, Willoughby at 139. The average weight at uh, an S12 was 125 pounds, so they were well above that, uh, despite them still being on a 1,570 calories. So Plower was, um, oh, sorry. D despite the fact that Plower was on 1,200 calories a day and Willoughby was on 1,100 calories a day. As their weight stubbornly remained above the predictive curve, he actually started taking off some even more food that they could eat. They started receiving increasing uh, appointed questions from the, the staff about cheating. Even though the staff was going out with them everywhere, that, like they, there was nowhere for these men to go that, that they weren't being monitored. Um, Plower nervously confessed that he did steal somebody's crust off their bread because they didn't like crust. Um, that was all that was seen there. Soon both men would be consuming less than a thousand calories a day. So these two that were the most athletic, couldn't lose weight, most heavily muscled, they actually had them under a thousand calories a day. And this spur spurred both of them to start buying because you were allowed to drink as much coffee, tea, and water as you wanted to. And you also were allowed to have chewing gum. So they, they, they started buying as much as 40 packs a day of chewing gum because they were on a th under 1,000 calories a day. Nuts and they still couldn't lose weight. All right, so then there was another guy. That, there's only been one person kicked out so far. The other volunteers began to notice that this guy, Sam Legg's uh, strange behavior before the scientists did. Uh, he began collecting cookbooks, reading the recipes, staring at the pictures of the food with almost uh, pornographic fasc fascination. Uh, Legs angst uh, erupted in hostility. He did start like fighting people. Leg liked to be left alone at meals, hovering over his tray at the end of the table, focusing purely on eating. Uh, Anzo Keys noted with some concern, uh, 
psychological deterioration of the men. They had lost almost, uh, they had already lost one. Two others, Willoughby and Plower, were uh, each chewing 40 packs of gum a day. Sam's like strange uh, behavior and fighting people, dining habits were disturbing the other men. The stacks drive was determined to have dropped slightly more than the drive for activity while the hunger drive and predictability soared. While the food served was con uh, considerably more bland than the food of the control period, the hungry men also judged that the palatability of the food had shot upward since the beginning of the experiment. Ambition of, uh, and then I highlighted this, ambition, self-control, and mental alertness, uh, con concentration, and comprehension had all dropped in the self-evaluation and in the evaluation of the lab. So they were just deteriorating like crazy. So he decided because he was really seeing that the men were starting to fight, they were starting to hover over their food, they were starting to read cookbooks and, and stuff. He decided in the 15th week to have one quote cheat meal. Uh, there was a 2,366 calorie meal that included, it was grapefruit juice, bacon, one egg, bread with butter, honey, milk, fruit punch, chicken, dressing, potatoes, gravy, corn, carrot salad, strawberries, baking powder, biscuits, celery, peanut butter, minced ham, jelly roll, and one orange. Okay, and these men were so starving that they actually ate the peel of the orange and Keyes got mad about this because he didn't know the nutritional value of that. This is the anal nature of this guy. I, I couldn't be around him, he would drive me nuts. Anyway, I wanted to point that out that he did do this and the fact that these people were so starving that they actually ate the, the peel of the orange. And this is off 1,570 calories a day. All right, so then he started talking about uh, the urination fascinations that some of these people were having. So on average, 1.33 quarts of urine per day were produced, but before, afterwards, it was 1.86, and at the peak, it was 2.58 quarts of transparent fluid was coming out of these men because they were allowed to drink as much water, tea, and coffee as they wanted to, so they, they started drinking water like crazy. Um, I don't know how to say this guy's name, but it was like Wigant. Uh, at this point, he was forced to mention, um, he was drinking so much water and had so much fascination with peeing that he actually was like ruining his body and he started urinating blood. And so he was the next to go. They had to kick him out. And so like Watkins, within a few days of normal meals, all symptoms, mental and physical, uh, physical disappeared completely. So he wasn't peeing your, uh, blood in his urine. He didn't have urine in his, he didn't have blood in his urine anymore. And he was completely fine within like three days of just eating normal. And this is 1,570 calories a day. This is, they, they still were think, um, all right, so then, this is kind of towards the end of where I, I stopped reading because this book, like literally, like it's just, I don't know, it's too many words. It just, cut it down, even though I, I use too many words. Um, they still think um, that the Plower and Willoughby were cheating. Why do you say that? Because you know why, because we're not losing weight like the others, because we're eating less than the others and we're not uh, on this weight curve. Then there was another guy Max Campbellman and every one of them um, carried a blanket. Oh, he was, they were talking about these men were getting so skinny and they were watching a movie, I think on Thursdays or something like that. They were getting so skinny that they were bringing blankets to fold up because they had no padding on the, on the rear end and they were in a lot of pain. Their average fat uh, percent went from 14 to 5%. And they also talked about the body temperatures went from 98.6 down to 95.8 in this amount of time, and that is a huge sign that your uh, thyroid is just not functioning correctly. <clears throat> and their heartbeats also went from 55 beats per minute down to 35, and some actually went down to 28 per minute. All right, Hen Henry, along with many of the others, saw his weight loss begin to plateau around the 20th week of the starvation. Unlike Willoughby and Plower, their, their weight stalled uh, basically the first week. This is when they started noticing really severe edema in everybody and they couldn't lose any more weight anymore because the men were just retaining water. The body did not want to lose any more weight. It was just retaining water. Uh, every morning, each subject found the side of the face that they were sleeping on was swollen. Edema in the body, uh, ironic comment, Edema was the body's ironic comment on starvation, a swelling caused by weight wasting away. Edema also greatly complicated the weight loss calculations 
and this irritated Keys. As the, the body retained water, it made the weight uh, loss slow, even as the affected subject continued to lose fat and tissue at the predicted weight. So even though they were losing body mass, they were not losing, or body tissue, they weren't losing weight because they were retaining water so bad. For whatever reason, I don't think I highlighted one of the uh, situations where this guy's legs got so so big and when you would push on it it wouldn't unindent and i think they had to it may have been so close to the end of it that they didn't do anything about it or they might have had to kick him out because it was getting really dangerous so towards the end of this this keys guy was getting irritated because they weren't really losing weight on his curve that they that he wanted them to because they were uh just having so much water oh here they're talking about it here uh, while many of the men had seen their weight loss slow or stop due to edema, Legs, uh, legs his actual na last name was Legs, weight had actually plummeted due to a, uh, a bout of excessive diuresis, urination even more extreme than uh, polyuria, now typical in the other men. Uh, legs weight was actually well below the predictive curve. He actually got down to 105.6 pounds. And I think that's the last thing I had highlighted here. Oh, mate, no, there's more. Uh, his score, th this, this is the last person that was on the treadmill test. His score was an abysmal six, down from 72 in the control and 32 at uh, S12. Overall, it rep represented a 91% drop in fitness. His deterioration was far worse th than the average drop of 72%. This is kind of a shady part of this experiment. Plower, they was one of the ones that wouldn't lose weight, and it's like they accused him so much of cheating that he kind of just admitted to it and then they they kicked him out of the thing but i don't actually think he did because i've been through this like they, they, these were the two most heavily muscled men in this whole thing like i've been through this like where you reduce your weight but nothing comes off uh sit down bob uh said keys we're sending uh what was the last standing uh they were accusing this Willoughby guy of, of cheating. Right now you weigh 136.4 pounds. 12 weeks ago you weighed 137.72. Your total weight loss in uh, 24 weeks has only been 18%. Yet despite being on one of the most restricted diets, don't uh, approach that loss. Uh, Keys sat back and waited for Willoughby to respond. I didn't cheat, says Willoughby. I think you did, says Keys. And I think you'll, you'll feel better when you admit to it. And they did this to Plower and Plower broke. I mean. I don't know. I don't really believe that he did because I've been through this. Like I've had people calculate how much calories I should be eating and actually make my meals and I still wasn't losing weight. And the last thing I have highlighted here before the refeed is that on average 152.7 pounds uh, was what the men weighed and they were down to 115.6 which is an average loss of 24.29%. I don't know that I'm gonna finish this book largely because there's just too much, like too much extra. That's that's my findings. There was two men that didn't really lose any weight at all. Um, some of the men wanted to be cannibals, cannibals and this is off living off what people are prescribing for a diet now. This is crazy, right? This is nuts. So anyway, uh, comments, questions down below. What do you think about it? Would you read this book? I don't, I don't, I, like I said, I wouldn't really recommend it. Maybe I would recommend reading the uh, manifests, but again, it's $150 and you can find a lot of information on it online. So I don't know that it's worth it. That is my review of this book so far. If I do finish this, I might make another one. I was more interested in what actually would happen to people on living on what was considered starvation back then, but what is considered normal now. Anyways, uh, that's it. Peace. Talk to you in the next video. Oh, like, subscribe.